This is the Jefferson Davis Monument, not far from the Tennessee state line near Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Davis was born here in 1808, though his family soon moved to Mississippi. This monument was finished in 1924 to mark his birthplace. And if the Confederate president could return to his birthplace on this particular Saturday, he'd see folks who would make him feel right at home. Folks who spend their weekends returning to the 60s, the 1860s. So why be a Civil War reenactor? Well, enjoyment basically is just to get out, and the fellowship and camaraderie with your friends. But uh, it makes you feel good to know that you're actually doing something to educate someone as far as history is concerned, because this period in history, most people either want to forget it or only want to take one view on it. And we try to portray as, as close to the soldier's life as we can. And it's, it's all about history. There's, there's nothing more involved in it. Living history means living the way those Confederate soldiers did. Well, it's boring and it's hard. Uh, you know, typical day for a Southern soldier, you know, roll call was anywhere from five to seven and you'd have fatigue duty, and you'd have a drill, and you'd have different assignments throughout the day. You were, like we are right now sitting down, you, you very rarely see that, except maybe at mess or uh, after dark when it was time to go to sleep. And even still, you'd have people that sat on a corporal of the guard and guard post throughout the camp. It's not all drudgery. Soldiers like music, too, long as it's music that might have been popular in 1860. Everything's got to be historically accurate, right down to the shirt on your back. Well, this is called Gene Wool. Uh, the 7th Kentucky uh, had Gene Wool uniforms, at least. Uh, at one time, they had Gene Wool. Uh, as he said a while ago, as the war went on, Confederate units were the most uh, garish and unlikely hodgepodge of uniforms you could imagine. There was no uniformity at all, really. Uh, everybody wore whatever they, whatever they had or could find. So you got to buy your uniform and, of course, your rifle, which might cost you as much as $500. Probably the biggest expense is a musket. Most of them will run anywhere from $400 to $500. Some of them are a lot more than that, depending on if you, know, if you want a particular exotic weapon that was used. Some of them are pretty high. That's more than a Confederate soldier would have made in quite some time. Uh, it's probably more than they ever made, because <laughs> uh, typically they wouldn't get paid, but once every few months, Sometimes they'd go uh, nearly a year before they ever saw any money. And sometimes some of them were in the service and never got paid. Fire! And if you decide to enlist as a reenactment artillery commander, you could spend several thousand dollars outfitting your battery and buying a cannon. For the five second uh, interval, number two on the command, fire. If anybody needs to get the most bang for their buck, it's the Southern ladies. This is the third outfit I've been in today. And that's the fun of it all, is being able to, to wear the different different outfits. The other two that I've had on are a day dress, are the, a, day dress, a, tea, dress. a tea dress. So my dress is an authentic 1861 pattern. There is no zippers, nothing that wasn't made in the time of the Civil War. And pricey. More than $300 for this beauty, and that's not Confederate money. It also doesn't include the other necessities every well-dressed lady must have. Pantaloons. Pantaloons. And then you have, you can have from a three to an eight bone hook slip. Then you have a, pa a slip at, and then you have your ball gown. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, you have to have a fan and a manicure. Sure, being the consummate lady and being treated like one are a big part of the fun, too. It is the most elegant dancing I think I have ever encountered. It is just the manners of this time period are 
are remarkable. I mean, it's just, it, it's just very elegant and um, makes you feel like a real lady. Maybe it's your spiritual side that needs attention. The reenactors even have that covered, though this reenactor is more than that. Well, actually, this is my ministry. A lot of preachers have churches out here that they go to. I'll make about 30 of this this year. Still, the reverend is not above getting in his jibes at the Yankees. It's just fun for the reverend and the reenactors, fun and living history to remind us of a little of the heritage Southerners share. Tennessee Civil War 150 is made possible in part by Tennessee Department of Education, Tennessee Civil War Sesquicentennial Commission, and Tennessee Civil War National Heritage Area.